And I think Devontae Smith, I give him a lot of credit. He said, I got to get my head around. I did a bad job. I, I give him all the credit in the world for admitting I got to catch that football. And he called it a perfect throw. And Nick Sirianni, to his credit, said the same thing. Well, Let me follow up on something you kind of touched on. You asked D Gun. I want to ask it of you. Um, you threw out all the very ugly numbers about the Eagles' offense over the last six quarters. That'd be zero points. Uh, it, well into game number two before they ever got a third down conversion, and not good. Um, yeah, the offense has been non-existent. Would be one way I would think to describe it. Oh, by the way, fifty-two to nothing. There's a fifty-two on the other side. The other team in a six-quarter period put up 52 points. That's not good either. I watched the Patriots just shred. And I know it was their second and some third, and in some cases even poor team guys in the second half. And Pittsburgh last week in the second half doing it against the Eagles' backup defensive guys. Well, their backup defensive guys might need to play. They yeah. better not because they look god-awful, which has been worse, the Eagles' offense and the Eagles' defense. Yeah, it's a, it's a chicken and egg causality argument. I mean, it really is. They haven't been able to stop the run game, as Derek Gunn mentioned. So that's been that's been the big, big issue. And you look at Sean Bradley. It's mainly been Sean Bradley and uh, Rashad Smith in there at linebacker. And uh, look, I, that's a big concern. But I go to the to the first team and I say, well, Alex Singleton is a is a really good run defender. But Eric Wilson, you know, the knock on him coming from Minnesota, great pass coverage linebacker, couldn't stop anybody in the run. So I think the hope is that Fletcher Cox and Javon Hargrave, when they play, can can do enough things up front to keep blockers off Eric Wilson. That won't be uh, as big a deficiency as it looks right now. But you're right. I mean, T.J. Edwards can stop the run, Alex Singleton. Other than that, I look at these linebackers and say, Oof. It, you know, people talk about modern football. They want speed on the field defensively, just like they do offensively. They're more worried about pass coverage. Right up until you got a Bill Belichick of the world or, or Tennessee comes in with a Derrick Henry or New England, you know, uh, people who know, people that zag when everybody else is zigging, so to speak, and, Bill Belichick, I talked about it on the show. He's always been that guy. And if you can't stop the run, guess what? Everybody thinks you got to pass the football. Jeffrey Lurie wants to pass the football. He's right. Everybody wants to pass the football right up until you can run the football. And then you say, yeah, why bother? I'm going to run it right down your throat. And right now, that's what people are doing to the Eagles in the preseason. Now, Sean Bradley's not going to be out there. Rashad Smith's not going to be out there. But we don't exactly have Dick Buckus either. So yeah, it's a little bit of a concern that, that they're having such an issue. Right. And, oh, by the way, uh, let's go to the Sam linebacker. Jannard Avery do anything to impress you the first couple weeks of preseason? Well, the only thing I noticed about Jannard Avery is we finally we saw the vanilla. We talked about it with Tarek Gunn. We talked about offense, defense. Eagles aren't showing anything. They did show some of the Mike Zimmer uh, uh, A-gap uh, looks where they sugar the a gaps and put the linebacker right over the center. Uh, usually Zimmer puts two. In that case, it would be Eric Kendricks and Anthony Barr, who, oh, by the way, are really good players. They did it with Jannard Avery. They only did it with one. So it was a little, you saw a little bit of a tweak. Yeah, it, there was some disruption. Uh, so I did like that. That's one positive that they actually unveiled that. And I think it's going to be part of the Eagles game plan defensively. Problem is they don't have Eric Kendricks and Anthony Barr. Right. So I, you know, I don't, can Jannard Avery be Anthony Barr? Good luck with that. Or Joe Osman. Nice. I know that Kerrigan is probably going to get a lot of time there and he hasn't now, played yet. I don't know yet. if he is. I thought that originally, but it looks like, it looks like it's going to be Avery and maybe Patrick Johnson as a rookie. Pat, uh, probably Patrick, in that jo Patrick Johnson do anything to impress you last night? He played a lot on special teams. So that that shows me that they're 
he's going to make the roster, right? Because they're 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 using him on special teams and saying, okay, we got this kid's going to be here. We got to get him up to speed. But no, I I told you the only people I could come up with were T.J. Edwards, and I also had Jack Stoll on the list until he dropped the ball that turned into an interception. So it's really hard to find any positive. I was down to talking about traits like Devontae Smith's route running, really good. I was talking about traits. He dropped three passes, and I know only one's official, but he dropped three passes, and. Oh, look, I give the kid credit because that back shoulder throw was a perfect throw from Joe Flacco. And I saw a lot of people defending Devontae Smith because they want to defend the first round pick. And I get it. And they don't care about Joe Flacco, the 14 year. He shouldn't be here. He gets paid too much. That was a perfect throw. And I think Devontae Smith, I give him a lot of credit. He said, I got to get my head around. I did a bad job. I, I give him all the credit in the world for admitting I got to catch that football. And he called it a perfect throw. And Nick Sirianni, to his credit, said the same thing. Look, this, we got the highs, but I, at some point you start thinking, what is, is it the water in Philadelphia? We got the Heisman Trophy winner. All we've been talking about is how dominant this kid was at the college level. And we're not wrong. One of the historic seasons, and he shows up in Philadelphia the first time and he drops three passes right away it's unbelievable and you talked earlier uh, before we punched the gun up about trying to put a positive spin on it i give two guys credit uh, our buddy uh johnny sunshine who was on in the <laughs> post game show he talked about the phenomenal separation that Devontae Smith It was, it was. That, that but was, that's what we're talking about, traits. We're but talking I, about traits. I, I looked at it the same way you did. If I had to give Devontae Smith a grade for his first game in an Eagle uniform, that's all plays that he was involved with. He's a C plus, a B minus. Uh, I, mean, I, I think he might be. Kind, I give little, him a C minus. Generous there, I, um, I give him a C minus. You got to catch the football. Uh, well, the first one was a bad drop. The second one, here's where I'm going to cut him slack about the back shoulder throw. What is the back shoulder throw? It's all about timing. It is about chemistry and timing. And he's yeah. playing with Joe Flacco, which he has had X amount of snaps with through the entire preseason because he got hurt. He wasn't out there. That is a purely timing play. That's not his ability, his uh, his physical traits, what he did at Alabama. No, that's all about timing and practice and what you've been able to work on with that particular quarterback wide receiver play. And they haven't had any. So the yeah, timing was a little bit fair. off. Flacco either threw a little early or Devontae turned a little bit late. Neither one of us know for sure. I'm going to no, put that one aside. We know for sure. We know for sure because the head coach admitted it. The wide receiver himself admitted it. He didn't get his head around. I said it immediately when I saw it on the field. He's got to get his head around quicker, and he knows it, and I give him credit for that. Joe Flacco protected him because Joe Flacco is a, a veteran guy. He understands. That was a big-time throw, and, you know, I, I always talk about the best in the business at that are Aaron Rodgers, Devontae Adams. You're right. It's a chemistry thing. Yeah. Uh, but when you do that right, it is indefensible. It There's nothing you can do. You cannot yeah, stop you it. You cannot stop it. It was it was perfect. And yeah, you're right. The chemistry, the timing is not there with Devontae Smith. And that takes me back to what we were talking with D Gunn and what we we're talking in the first segment as well. Reps, rep, this guy is super talented. That's why I'm using Devontae Smith when I talk about J Jalen Hurts. Nothing against Jalen Hurts. But Jalen Hurts doesn't have the talent at the quarterback position that Devontae Smith has at the wide receiver position. That's what I'm comparing. And even Devontae Smith needs reps. He needs reps as a young player. He needs to get it down. Jalen Hurts is going into week one, and, and, and I believe Derek Gunn is right. The plan right now, and it could change because he got sick and he didn't even get his two series he was supposed to get. The plan from the Eagles is that he's not playing against the Jets. So that means Jalen Hurts is going to Atlanta with 10 preseason reps, and you see a top-tier talent struggle because he hasn't gotten reps. I, I, I don't like it. I don't like it. 
here's here's why I'm okay with it when it comes to the quarterback position. And I question the decision of the organization. Coach included, but don't kid yourself, not by himself. This was made across the board on the Eagle organization as to who was going to play, who wasn't going to play last night, save Jalen Hurts, who got sick. Uh, here's why I'm okay with Jalen not playing next week. Do you really want to see Joe Flacco in a regular season game? Do you really yeah. want to see Nick Mullins in a game that actually Look, I get I, I get the injury part of it, but this is my this has been my argument since day one, since the NFL. <clears throat> they haven't gone to, you know, load management like like the NBA or Major League Baseball, whatever. But no matter what these guys say, the sports science guys, you can't legislate injuries. Nobody knows. Brandon Brooks is going to show up June and he's working out like a madman and he looks like a bodybuilder and he looks like he should be at SummerSlam with John Cena and Roman Reigns. And that's for you, Jody, at SummerSlam week. Uh, and, he, and he pulls up and he tears his Achilles in, working out in June with nobody else on the field. You can't legislate injuries. You know, Carl Lawson with your team and, and D Gunn is talking, you know, those things, you know, Jason Kroom, uh, who's not a big name player, obviously, but we feel bad for the kid. Significant knee injury, non contact, non contact. You can't legislate injuries. And when you have young players who need reps to get better, it's football. You got to give them the reps. Here's, here's where I agree with you and disagree with you. Disagree. Oh, you can legislate injury. If you don't go on the field, I'm going to bet Jalen Hurts doesn't get hurt standing on the sideline next week. That he will start the game and finish the game on the sideline in one piece and he will do the same next week. Or as soon as it's done. Game's over. He goes back to the locker room. They check him. He's good to go for the opener. You can legislate injury. Now, at what cost? Yes, the lack of reps. And if he goes down and he looks like he's not on the same page with Devontae Smith and Rager and Goddard and everybody else in game number one against the Falcons, you can look back and go, ooh, maybe we should have played. Maybe should have taken a risk. Yes, it's a risk to go out there. Every single time you take a snap in a National Football League game, it's a risk. You have to weigh that. You have to measure it. You have to put it on the scales and see if it's worth it or not. We can sit here and second guess afterwards whether they were too cautious or not cautious enough. So I think yeah, you can well, like you're it. right. I mean, when he's standing there, yeah, he's not going to get hurt. You're right. Uh, but pregame, uh, when he's working out, he might strain a calf. He might. We've seen that. We've seen that happen all over the NFL. Uh, he might uh, tweak his hamstring. He might hurt his groin. I, it, especially with younger players. I'm. I mean, that's the mentality of this league. For the look, I always bring up Zach Ertz because he's the one who told me. Uh, injury rate in this league is 100%. If you play long enough, you're going to get hurt. Um, I don't know. You can put people under glass um, with young players who need reps. Look, I agree. I said I agree with the Lane Johnsons of the world, the Brandon Brooks of the world, the Fletcher Coxes, the proven players, the Brandon Grahams. When you need young players who, who are developing, when you have young players that are developing, like Jalen Hurts, Devontae Smith, Jalen Rager, um, um, Quez Watkins, you got to play them. You got to play them so they can get better. And oh, by the way, they're playing uh, the receivers. They let them play a half because they needed it. And you saw they still need it. They need more, all of them. So that was part of the problem. And then secondary is the fact that, look, it's not their fault that Jalen Hurts couldn't play last night. He was scheduled to play, very limited, but now he didn't play. So now you got to adjust. We got to get this kid some reps, and it doesn't look like he's getting any reps. We will adjust here on Birds 365 after an Eagles 35 to nothing butt kicking at the hands of the Patriots. Yeah, I know it's a preseason game. I know it doesn't matter. If you invested close to three hours last night and you were rooting for the hometown green team, I'm sorry. That's just not a good look. Uh, we'll continue to break it down. John McMullen, Jody McDonald, 
Oh, we got our guy Chris Franklin is ready to go early. We'll come back and punch him up next from NJ.com. He with us on Birds 365. If you missed any of today's show on the Jacob Media channel, listen to the podcast on your way home. Available on YouTube, Apple, and Spotify.